It's Steve the Red Pigment, Steve, oh yeah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Holoska College Night with this awesome. Oh. Ah. Battle music, of course. Well, this is a revisit of the stage Shalaska's Coolidge Night Act 1. Certainly the longest out of all of the Warhawk stages. Um, not counting Eggman Land, of course. That's not a real Warhawk stage, that's like a combination. But this this is the, the longest pure Warhawk stage. Um, I've actually c kind of grown to like it. Um, actually, uh, to, to be honest, it's what, yeah, it's, it, this, this, this game does something incredibly, well, I don't know if it's good that it does that, but it does something, it pull it off incredibly well, that you can complete stages in like 10, like, this Warhawk stage, you can, there's actually a hot dog mission later, you can, com can complete this level in 10 minutes, but on your first playthrough you might take 30. This is especially true with Eggman Land, you can complete that stage in 15 minutes or 10 minutes or something like that. But, on your first playthrough, you're likely to take more than an hour. <sighs> anyway, I haven't really thought about what I should talk about this episode, actually. I, mean, I was just went straight in because I thought I should record some more Sanic because... Activity. I need to update my channel. I mean, I updated my channel yesterday with that weird English pronunciation video where I said, uh, where I didn't know how to pro pronounce police. Which was, of course, um, a very, very. You can tell I'm. I'm. You can tell I that that English is totally my first language. That I've studied it my entire life, and that I'm absolutely perfect at it. <laughs> oh well, I tried. I I did try. I I really did try. I I promise. I tried my best. And I'm, uh, I'm actually uh, pretty uh, impressed how many words I knew. Though, Emma herself was impressed how many words I didn't know. Like, I didn't know what cleanse is. To cleanse. And I also um, didn't know what a, pint, what a pint is. Which is mostly because I... We use the metric system, which is much better, by the way. Nobody needs the fucking imperial system. The imperial system is the worst. W why not make it like we, we we live in base 10? Why not make it in like we have millimeters, then we have 1000 millimeters is a is a meter, then we have 1000 meters a kilometer. And 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 <sighs> why? You, you, I don't even know, like, the, the, like, isn't it like 12 feet are an, are, uh, no wait, 12 inches are a foot, and, uh, and 7 feet are, I don't even know, it just bothers the hell, the imperial system is nonsense, and you gotta admit it, <laughs> why not base everything off of base 10, it makes so much more sense, we live in, we have a base 10 world, like, that's, that's how we calculate, most of us at least. I mean, there are 20 systems, and there are 12... There are actually people who want the, the world to use its system of 12. So it's the dodecimal, do, dodecimal system, I think. Um, which actually makes quite a bit of sense. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> why? Why? I, 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 I don't ever understand. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I don't even know what a pint is. <laughs> like, what, what kind of what kind of thing you measure with it. Um, anyway. Velocity Cool Edge Night. I, I like how they were able to pull, a, pull it off here. Um, to make the stage go, mu by, by mu bleh, go by much quicker if you know what you're doing. Which, yeah. It's always a plus in my book. Like, every stage in this game is like that, really. Sh look at Shamar Act 1. Like, I could complete that stage in 3 minutes and 30 seconds, and I have, I have myself, the first playthrough, I took like 7 minutes or 8 minutes. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, I like that, actually. Uh, I also like the music here. This stage isn't so bad. I've warmed up to this stage a bit. I think my new least favorite um, 
Warhawk stage would have to be Empire City. I'm sorry, Skyscraper Scamper. <laughs> it's so amazing how like, uh, the, he, the stages, um, Jungle Joyride, Arid Sands, and Empire City. Everyone just calls it Empire City. <laughs> even though it's Skyscraper Scamper. I don't even, it's, it's weird. Actually, Eggman Land is called Crimson Carnival, if you didn't know that. I, I know that because of the, the, the soundtrack CD. Um, it doesn't actually say, I don't know if it says that anywhere in the game, but as far as I know, the official name is Crimson Carnival. Which, yeah, I don't know. Is interesting, I suppose. Not that I would ever want to listen to that song, but... <sighs> How to get burned, Ice. <laughs> You're just not cool enough. I love this music, by the way. Just saying, I, I I love this music. I love this game. This game is so great. Ah, why do people not? Well, actually, uh, I still find it kind of surprising that on Fawful's minion, Fawful min, Fawful's minions list of top 10 Sonic games where he let fans vote. Um, people actually chose Sonic Unleashed as the best game ever. Uh, the best game, best game ever. Best game, best Sonic game ever. There we go. Over Sonic, uh, Sonic Adventure 2, which I find kind of crazy because Sonic Adventure 2, I mean, Sonic Adventure 2 gets more praise than... I would even say, yeah, I would even say that it gets more praise than the classic title sometimes. It's just crazy, man. It's just really crazy. I don't. I, I personally don't enjoy it, um, Sonic Adventure 2 that much, but yeah, I could can d definitely tell that Sega has pleased the fans with that one. I still don't get what. There, there, there we go. That's that's how you get out of the ice. Imagine if you were like suddenly in a frozen ice block. I mean, I, I mean, what would happen? Would you, like, pass out because of the coldness first? Or would you just pass out? Would, like, you could, couldn't breathe, of course. So, what would happen? Like, what what would kill you? What, what would it be like? Would you, like, instantly just die? Or, like, and what would be the reason for it? What would be the exact reason for your death? And would you even? Like, I know that, that um, there's, like, this, this ice preservation thing. Like that you can actually maybe survive in ice. But it's like, yeah, I, I wonder what would happen if you were just instantly frozen in the ice block. Which would probably, would, which would require an enormous amounts of energy, I mean. Uh, as far as I know, freezing or melting ice takes just as much energy as getting it from 0 to 70 degrees. So, yeah. It's kind of interesting, like, getting frozen frozen water that is zero degrees to water to liquid water that is zero degrees is the same as boiling it to well, well not boiling it but at 70 degrees it would be close to boiling like it might might already like produce bubbles like like small it's it's kind of crazy also yeah yeah so would kind of be interesting to to like find out how much energy that's actually like like the 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 physics behind like Mario power-ups like the ice flower in Super Mario Galaxy like how much energy would have would this ice flower have to produce or give or whatever um, to actually free like like yeah what 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 would it take in real life to freeze water this quickly and uh this solid what would, what would it take it's kind of an interesting question that i hope some of some youtuber answers um one day like game theory or vsauce 3 there are enough people that we would talk about that kind of stuff so energy is an interesting thing i i, th I, I like energy quite a lot in in, in physics because it explains so many things which you wouldn't think they could be explained in this way. <laughs> I really like that. For it's, it's kind of cool. 
So yeah, energy is fun. Especially, um, I especially wish I had it more sometimes after not sleeping well. <laughs> I don't know, I'm actually a person who can deal really well with not sleeping much. Like, I'll be tired, I'm, I might even have a headache, but I can even, like, I can, if I'm really tired, I can still do really well on an exam. I might just forget one or two things, but I really, I, it doesn't affect me that much for some reason. I mean, of course, I'll still be worse, but I won't really be noticing that I'm worse. It just, I, I, I find that quite interesting, actually. How far are we into this stage? Okay, we're about half, halfway done. I can always look because I'm watching the footage in Sony Vegas, so I can, can see all the editing and where we are in the video and everything like that. And this is post count theory, like I said, a billion times. I'm actually um, thinking to myself whether I want to do it, like, at least play through the Wii version of Sonic Unleashed at least once for the channel. Because, like, I feel like it, I, ha I should show that off because one thing that always bugs me is when people in like in reviews or something talk about one version of uh, Sonic Unleashed and totally neglect the other one and are like, oh, I have this problem and this problem and this problem and this is or th I like this and I like this and I like this and um, those things are different in the other version, especially when people hate on one version. Like the, if people hate on how much Warhawk there is in the Wii version and then never touch the PS3 or Xbox 360 version because that one has a lot less Warhog. And I, f I think um, it's also uh, a bit, yeah, the, the daytime stages are, in this game are also a bit more impressive and long. So there is a better balance in this game, especially um, the, the balance is better even towards the end of the game, which is pretty shitty in the Wii version where there's just five Eggman Land Warhawk stages and it's just really ridiculous. We actually hacked most of the medals in this stage, we just didn't get all of the other collectibles, which is kind of interesting. I'm currently also writing a review for um, Sonic Unleashed. I want to go completely in-depth with this game because I feel like this game never got a good review. Let's not talk about the IGN reviews of Sonic Unleashed on the Wii, on the Wii and... Um, it's especially the HD version. Um, let's not talk about those because those are terrible. Even Some Call Me Johnny's review, uh, like, I like Sonic, Some Call Me Johnny's reviews, but when he, like, his Sonic Unleashed review is really old, and especially a Sonic Unleashed for Wii review is extremely short, and he's just like, oh, is this, I don't like this game, and, and, and he didn't even, like, they didn't, it wasn't really a review, it was just, comparing the two versions and um like assuming that whoever watch watches the review al already knows everything about the wii and hd version of the game which is kind of silly and i don't feel like many reviews cover these games these games too well and i i kind of want to do that i i I'm, I'm inspired a bit by um, Matthew Matosis with, with this because I fucking love Matthew Matosis' reviews. Like, I, I don't even care that Metal, the Metal Gear Solid 4 review is 1 hour and 12 minutes long. I love that. I want to know everything about a game and what m might make me enjoy it and what might make me not enjoy it. And I, like, I can agree with most of what he says. Even, like, even if it isn't as big of a deal, like, um, sometimes he, he uh, criticizes something that I will I will agree with it, but I um, won't actually. It's not actually that big of a deal to me. So it's it's kind of in I like I like Matthew Matosis' reviews a lot. He goes so in depth that like no other reviewer I know does. And if and if there's any other reviewers who put this much effort and this long like the, and makes uh, and th goes this in depth. Uh, into video games. If there's any other reviewer you know, then be sure to let me know because I fucking love that kind of uh, review. And I'm kind of trying to do the same for Sonic Unleashed to compensate for all the reviews that didn't do these games proper justice. And I don't, I'm not saying that um, 
like uh, I know that I'm not I'm not saying that um, because I think all the reviews were too negative. Uh, I'm just saying that because the reviews were either too negative or too positive and didn't actually say tell me much about like it's it's like they were incredibly superficial. Either someone loved the game and just couldn't stop gushing over it, or they just uh, start or just um, didn't even really get the game like. There, I, uh, there's a game that, like, I, I don't say that I understand why a game, like, I don't know how to explain. There's, like, there's a, there's, you have to understand a game to fully enjoy it. Uh, with this game, some people just don't seem to understand it and just mash buttons to kill all the enemies and just take everything really slowly. There's the same with Sonic Generations. Sonic Generations is a game that once you, um, in, the, in the modern stages, wants you to keep going fast, but at Gamer's Instinct tell you, tell you, um, your Gamer's Instinct tell you to slow down when there's platforming. But that's not the point. You're supposed to run up to the platforms and keep the speed going while jumping, and the platforms are exactly that designed that way. A game that I feel I don't get is Sonic Lost World and Sonic and the Black Knight. Sonic and the Black Knight, I feel like I'm missing something majorly, like I'm not understanding the uh, the um, controller layout and all the all the different things it can do in the game. I just uh, I don't I don't know. There, there's just something I don't I don't get the game. I'm not in the game for some. I don't know how to explain it. I feel like some people feel the same way about this game, and I feel to review a game, you have to get it first, you have to understand it first. And um, understanding it doesn't mean that you have to like it afterwards, uh, you have just have to understand what the game was going for, and what the developers were thinking when making everything. Like, oh, uh, oh, like, if, if maybe, maybe it clicks, it will cl click in my mind at some point with Sonic and the Black Knight. Oh, the developers wanted you to use this specific combo all the all the time, and um, that will make the game much more enjoyable. And it's not about it's not about this what I thought it was. It's more about this, and I have to I have to do this to enjoy it the most the most I can. Maybe then I, I I don't feel like I have the right to review Sonic and the Black Knight because I don't get it. I don't I don't understand what what like I feel like there's something I'm missing. And, and until I figure out what that thing I'm missing is, I will not review the game. And that's kind of the thing, I understand Sonic Unleashed, I understand most of the decisions they made here. And I'm not instantly, like, I'm not instantly going to go off, oh my god, I hate how there's no platform in this game. Um, first of all, because I don't, I like this style of Sonic more. Um, uh, where was I? Okay, yeah. Um, but also, yeah, I don't. I wasn't that way with Sonic Lost World either. I wasn't like, oh my goodness, I hate how there's no speed in this. I hate how, um, I hate how there's way more platforming. How you have to slow down so much. Or Sonic Lost World on 3DS, especially. I love Sonic Lost World on 3DS, even though it's nothing like games that I, other games that I enjoy in the franchise. I don't, I don't um, instantly hate a game because it's different from what I usually enjoy. I just want to understand a game. I just have to understand a game for me to really enjoy it, like, be able to enjoy it in the first place. I really want to understand a game, and un until I understand a game, I, I, I don't feel like I'm doing it proper justice. Like, if I, I... I still feel like I'm missing something with Sonic Lost World. Like, I've had heard so many reviewers say, yeah, I've had this mindset about Sonic Lost World before when I played it the first time. And then I st started realizing, oh, I have to play it this way, and I, 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 I myself still don't get it. This is why I'm not, I don't, I won't just tell you, oh my god, Sonic Lost World is a bad game. Even though I enjoyed games like, um, Shadow the Hedgehog more, because I got, but because I got them. I under, I, I like Shadow the Hedgehog more. But I don't feel like I have the right to say that Shadow the Hedgehog is a better game. Because it's probably not. It's probably really not. I just... That's that's just... I, I feel like most people who reviewed Sonic Unleashed didn't get the game. And I totally get it. I don't... I know what went through the developers' minds when they created all of this. What they wanted you to do. And everything like that. What they wanted this game to be. 
And as soon as I know that, I, I feel like I have the right to actually review this game. And that's what I'm going to do, I think. I, I want to review this game, really. I really want to review this game. Because I feel like it needs to be done proper justice. This game and the Wii version, of course. Because um, at, at some point I want to review that too. Because I, I get that game too. And um, there's... Yeah. Um, there's a lot to be said about that version too. It has a lot of uh, things going for it. And a lot of things that are worse about it than the HD version. Some things that didn't work out so well. I personally am always a defender of Dimps games. I know that people are always like, Oh my god, Dimps sucks! They make games that are so shallow and there's just making the, the, the inferior versions of video. But I, I of, of, the, of the console games, but I really love um, Sonic Colors on DS. I, th uh, I, I think that game is fantastic. I really had a lot of fun with Sonic Generations on 3DS and I... Also, really, really, really do like Sonic Lost World on 3DS. I really think that Dimps is a good developer that Sega should definitely keep and let them produce more Sonic games. I'm not sure how much I, I like this, I, how much I like the Sonic 4 franchise. So the second game is definitely better than the first, but Sonic, I'm, it's not technically, it's not that much my, my my gameplay style. Again, I get what they're trying to go for, and I I think. Some, a lot of things in the game work, works, worked well. A lot of things in the, in the game worked well. Um, it, it just, it's d d different. You have to approach it, like, as soon as I got it, I was like, oh, this is not a classic title. This is definitely not part of the Sonic, uh, the original, so original Sonic the Hedgehog series. Um, and there are so many things you have to consider, reconsider. And, yeah. I feel like, um... Some some people like that's a big issue with uh, that I have with some people. Um, they are quick, very quick to judge a game because of um, the changes it made without trying to understand the changes. Like uh, I feel like um, people are like just, are just like, oh my god, what does it have? Does a beat 'em up have to do in a Sonic game without actually trying to get into the mechanics of the beat 'em up? Like this is the, that's because I like the war that's why I like the Warhawks so much because I actually tried to understand what they were going for with the Warhawk and that's why I like it so much and that's a good conclusion to this because we just finished a Warhawk stage one of the worst ones I think but it's still pretty enjoyable I like the Warhawk a lot and I feel like it has its place in this game sorry if this if this episode was too opinion loaded again like the other one but I'll see you next time on something else or Sonic Unleashed until then.